Hello, I'm Brandon Martini, a commercial pilot and flight instructor. And I'm Carson Vasquez. I'm a private pilot. And you're listening to the Aviation Mentors Podcast, sponsored by Stratus Financial. So buckle up, because the Aviation Mentors are taking off. Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of the Aviation Mentors Podcast. Uh, Thanks for joining us today. Uh, We're going to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart, and that is some weather stuff today. Uh, We're going to be talking about METARs and TAFs. And we've mentioned it a few times. We even had an episode uh, when we first started about six months ago or so that talked about what a TAF is and what a METAR is. But today we're going to get a little bit more in depth into METARs and TAFs in general uh, because they give you a whole lot of information on weather. And I think that's one of the most important things and one of the hardest subjects for a lot of students to grasp. So we're going to be talking about that today. I honestly, I used to hate teaching about weather. I used to hate learning about weather. I used to hate everything about weather. But nowadays, it is my absolute favorite subject to talk about. And I think it's because I hated it so much uh, because I just didn't get it. It made me a better, better pilot. And obviously, now I'm I'm not quite a meteorologist by any means, uh, but I remember on my IFR check ride, my DPE said, well, you're not going to be a weatherman, <laughs> but you met the ACS standard or PTS standard, whatever it was then. So um, I'm still not a weatherman and uh, don't plan on being one or pretending to be one on TV, uh, but I do know how to read TAFs and METARs fairly well. So we're going to talk about that today. Yeah, if there's something I know, it's uh, it's Brandon loves his weather. And I, I learned that when I did my stage check and my, my end of course check when I was doing my private pilot training. Brandon really drills into weather. So let's start off with the very basics. What are METARs? What are TAFs? And why are they important? Well, a METAR is a meteorological aerodrome report and a TAF is a terminal aerodrome forecast. Uh, so the big big difference between a METAR and a TAF is a uh, METAR is what's happening now or what happened maybe in the past hour. Sometimes they they become old and outdated, but essentially a METAR is either now or before us, and a TAF is exactly what it says in its name, a forecast, a terminal aerodrome forecast. Uh, so that's essentially what TAFs and METARs are. They're they're just tools that we can use uh, in identifying what the weather is or will be. And speaking of tools, we, we talk a lot about ForeFlight um, as a really great tool that we could use, but it's also a pretty expensive tool to use. So where else should we be going to find the most current weather uh, when it's coming to the METARs and the TAFs? Well, I personally like um, Aviation Weather Center, and you can go to aviationweather.gov, and that is my personal favorite. I honestly, I just look at that even before ForeFlight, because if I'm at my computer at least, I can just Go to aviationweather.gov. It auto-populates in my browser. It's one of my favorites, believe it or not. I, I know I'm crazy for having that, but it is. Yeah, I think it's a pilot thing because I, I have it as one of mine uh, right next to FlightAware, also next to ForeFlight, and uh, and they're all just like saved as my, as my bookmarks. So whenever I start a flight or want to find out where I'm going or what I'm going to do, first thing I look at is, is uh, FlightAware just to see you know, what's going on if anyone else is flying. I'm like, okay, yeah, other people are flying, so let's, let's take a look and see if I should be flying. And I go to Aviation Weather Center, look at the weather, and figure out if it's something I want to fly in. If it is, then we go to Four Flight and plan our flight. So that's kind of my my steps. Yeah, you've got some uh, an interesting way of going about things. <laughs> um, <laughs> so everyone everyone comes up with their own way. I don't I don't go that route. I I look at the route I want to fly first, and then I'll go to the weather, and then I'll go back and change my route if needed. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I've got all those same bookmarks too, uh, including uh, Sky Vector and uh, lots. Actually, I've got a whole litany of them. I guess we can get into another episode. But uh, I have a lot of bookmarks saved just for flying, and I used to have even more uh, back when I was just learning to fly. But I think the best part about Aviation Weather Center is that it's free. Uh, it's free and it's very accurate because it's coming from the uh, the National Weather Service, right? Yeah, it is. I know there's there's a, pe- a few people on the internet that try to say it's not accurate, but I'm going to say it's accurate as, as much as the weather can be accurate, right? I mean, it was raining uh, where I live in uh, Orange County today, so and that was not on the forecast. It, so it was going to be sunny. It was supposed to be sunny today, so right. weather's always unpredictable. Definitely go look outside and verify what it says on the uh, on the METAR, right? Yeah, I I guess that is step one is uh, verify that everything's actually correct. And something we don't talk about is that, um, you know, the METARs and TAFs, they can be wrong. And that's due to to errors with the uh, actual machinery, right? Uh, 
you know, there, there's problems that can happen. Yeah, there are. I mean, if you see a, a money symbol uh, in it, uh, like on a METAR, a money symbol in particular means uh, there might be some inaccuracy on that METAR. And I actually pulled up some METARs that I always talk with my students on. I pulled up uh, Riverside, KRAL. Uh, I got Avalon, which is Catalina Airport, AVX. And I got Ontario with the METAR and the TAF. And then I always like doing Dallas, so KDAL. Because normally, everybody in Texas, they've got a little bit stranger weather than we have in California. So so that's the reason why we do that. Or at least I do that for my students. Because in California, I never get good enough uh, METARs and TAFs where it gets interesting to read, right? But mentioning that they could be off is actually a really cool thing. Because I looked up Avalon right now, KAVX, and it actually has a money symbol in it. So it's telling everybody, hey, somebody needs to spend some money on me and get fixed. That's what that money symbol means. So there could be something wrong with it. From my experience, whenever that happens, it just, because it means it needs maintenance. Uh, Whenever I've seen it, I haven't seen like crazy inaccuracies, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's a hundred percent accurate, right? Exactly. Uh, I was really hoping you'd bring up the money symbol because uh, I always thought, you know, that if if you trust this a hundred percent, then you're gonna have to pay for it. So I'm glad we have different ways of remembering the same thing. Yeah, that is the same way. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, so, you know, after you look at, at METARs and TAFs and read them a few times in practice, reading the weather reports can actually be pretty simple. Um, it's the same information, it's the same layout, but what are some of the errors that people make when they go and read these weather reports? There's a lot of errors. Uh, misunderstanding what a timestamp would be, like uh, not knowing where the date is. So if you're looking at it, I'm just going to use a METAR, for example. Um, the first set of six numbers followed by a, a Z for Zulu. Uh, the first two numbers are the date. And this is in Zulu time, right? So the date might be tomorrow or the day before, depending on where you're at in the world, I guess. Uh, but right now, uh, it says on Avalon uh, that this report was created on the 30th of this month, which is May. Uh, at least for our recording day, 30th of May, uh, at 1640 Zulu. Uh, So that was about uh, 25 minutes ago for us. And it actually says it was auto. It was an automatic observation. A lot of people don't know what auto means, and it just means an automatic observation. So, But the biggest uh, misnomer is really reading that timestamp and number in the beginning. You just have to know that's when the report came out, and uh, that's when it was, was supposedly accurate, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so with the timestamps, you know, it, it is a little bit confusing sometimes when you're looking at it and it is the next day's date, but it's because it's in Zulu time. So you have to remember how to convert where you are into Zulu time and back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And then on top of that, if you look at a TAF in particular, you'll notice that it has that same six digits of numbers followed by the Z. And then after that, at least on the first line of a TAF, sometimes TAF will only have one line, by the way, sometimes it has many. Uh, At Ontario Airport, it's got five lines. And at Dallas Airport, it's only got four today. Uh, But essentially, on that first line, after you have the six numbers and the Z, it actually has the valid from. And that is valid from, and it has four numbers with a forward slash and then another four numbers. The first two numbers are the date, just like the date was before. Uh, So on this one for Dallas, it says the 30th. And then the second two numbers is the time that it's valid from. So it's valid from the uh, 1500 Zulu. And then on the other side of that uh, forward slash, it says the 31 and 12. So that means it's valid until the 31st at 1200 Zulu. So we could read it out loud and it's valid from the 30th at 1500 Zulu until the 31st at 1200 Zulu. So you want to make sure that you're reading these correctly. And you can also ask, because for example, I know that we're talking a lot of numbers and sometimes that's really hard to visualize. So I'm trying to, to say it in a visual way um, on the podcast since we're, we don't have a whiteboard and we're not um, audio video yet. Uh, that's coming soon, hopefully, by the way, audio video. Looking forward to it. Um, so if we look at Dallas, it says on the 30th, 1501 Zulu. That means this report came out at that point. That's when this report was generated. Followed by that is the 30th at 1500 Zulu, and it's valid until the 31st at 1200 Zulu. So there's some numbers right after that, and they almost look like a METAR in the first line of numbers. And on this one, it says 13005KT. So it's 130 at five knots, okay? And then there's some few clouds and broken clouds and stuff, but that's irrelevant for what I'm going to explain. 
So when that came out, that was just saying that it's valid at the 30th, on the 30th, at 1500 Zulu. And it's valid until that next line comes out. And the next line says FM 30 1800. So that means that it's valid from the 30th at 1800 Zulu. And you can just remember everything after where it says from, it's valid until the next line. So the same thing happens on that first line that we read, which was the 30th at 1500 Zulu. That entire line is valid from 1500 Zulu until the next line, which is 1800 Zulu. So it's valid for three full hours. A lot of people get confused and they're not sure what that first line means, uh, but it's, it's also part of the TAF because the TAF came out at uh, 1501 Zulu, uh, but it was valid at 1500 Zulu. So this is a weird one. It actually came out a minute after it was valid. Um, but in, in reference, yeah, actually that happened on a couple of them. It happened on Ontario's today also. That's weird. Normally they come out early. I don't know why it says that. Normally they come out like an hour before. So that's interesting. I guess it's not just Texas that has weird ones, right? No, it's not. No, it's definitely not. I mean, we're in California. It's definitely weird here for sure. The only thing weird in Texas is is Austin, right? That's their whole whole uh, slogan. They say keep Austin weird. And here are two pretty much guaranteed uh, guaranteed check ride questions. While we're talking about METARs and TAFs, uh, let's tackle METARs first. So, wh- what is the area that METARs are valid for? Like the a- area radius around the, the actual airport. By the way. Carson had me stumped on this one for a second, even though, yes, it, it's probably a check ride question, uh, but I'm not above anything to admit that I forgot. I couldn't even remember because it's been so long since this question was asked of me and I haven't taught that particular answer in a long time, but I'm really glad he asked it because that forced me to go double check because I thought I knew what it was, uh, but I didn't want to act like I knew if I didn't double check, right? So I actually double checked. So now I know for sure that my original inclination was correct. Um, but a METAR coverage is good from five nautical miles from the station. Unless it says vicinity, then it's five to 10 uh, miles from the station. And sometimes you'll see something that says distant or DSNT. Uh, and that means beyond 10 nautical miles from the station. And, uh, you yeah, know, let's see if you get stumped on this one too. What about TAFs? How, how much are, uh, how far out are TAFs valid for? Well, this is an interesting one because METARs use nautical miles and TAFs actually use statute miles. Go Google what that is because I'm not going to try to explain it over, over the podcast right this second. We can get into it later. <laughs> um, but a TAF is valid for five statute miles radius around an airport. Um, and then it can go up to another 10 miles. It kind of depends on which one. Got it. Yeah, I'd really like to keep stumping you. Um, let, let me try just, just two more. I promise I'll be done after that. These are also on my check ride. So um, how often do, do METARs come out? Well, METARs come out typically 55 to 59 minutes past the hour. Um, but the data can be about 15 minutes old. And by the way, if you're looking at four flight, uh, you'll notice that sometimes it says that it's an hour, two hours. I've seen it three hours. Uh, past due. And you can even go to aviation weather and they're still old there also. So sometimes they just, they don't update. And I'm not really sure the reasoning behind that. I'm sure we could get somebody from the FAA that could probably explain that a lot better, but typically they're issued at 55 minutes past the hour. And the same thing happens uh, when you're, when ATIS comes out as well, they typically come out around the same exact time. Yeah, it's weird. I've gone on four flight or, or aviation weather center and I've seen, you know, just old data that's still sitting there because it hasn't been updated. So yeah, we don't have an answer for why that happens sometimes, but you can also always call, get a get a different observation, check another local airport, although it's not the same accurate information. Uh, but Brandon, how often do, uh, do TAFs come out? Uh, those are really weird ones, actually. Um, they're prepared four times a day, and they're issued at 2340, uh, 0540, 1140, and 1740 uh, UTC. So they're, they're issued at very odd times, and I have no idea why they're issued at those times. Again, I want an FAA uh, guy or gal to come on here and uh, explain why that happens. And also, um, they, are, they come out in six-hour intervals, so I'm also curious uh, why, they, why they do that. And sometimes I've seen them where they'll come out, and they're only valid for like a two-hour interval. So even though the uh, FAA publications state that they come out at certain times, 
sometimes they're off. And I know uh, that's kind of an odd thing to say, but there's always an exception in aviation. Always. Are the ones that are that are valid for two hours um, when there's something urgent developing, like a thunderstorm? Or am I thinking of something different? No, that can happen. Yeah, they'll have they'll have urgent reports and things like that. But for some reason, I've seen them and they'll only come out and they'll just they're not valid for the same amount of time. And I don't know the reason why. But this is why we're pilots. We start talking about weird things and why others do certain things, and just like why there's a class Delta inside LAX's class Bravo airspace. Uh, that one's a confusing one for a lot of people. And I like to show that one in person because it's, it would be way too difficult to explain on here. But just on as a sidebar, uh, if you go look at a IFR chart uh, for LAX, it has a little D uh, next to it. And that's because there's a class Delta airspace in it. And then if you go look at the VFR uh, chart for LAX, you'll actually see uh, a little sliver of class Delta right above the northern part of the airport. And you'll see a a sliver of class Delta right below the Southern part of the airport. It's a really, really odd thing. And I'm not really sure why they did it. It's gotta be something because they've got special flight rules there. Or I don't really know reason why, but it's there for sure. Uh, and it's an interesting one. Yeah. I think once we start doing the video portion, um, brands could be able to, to go a little more in depth into things like this and show everybody because it is a weird one. Uh, it's something that you pointed out on my end of course test. You, you pointed out and said, Tell me all the airspace from uh from the ground you know, all the way up to to you uh, know, like sixty thousand, and you're like right here, and uh, I, I couldn't figure it out. I, I was like I don't know what this is and why it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so you you went and got coffee and said by the time I come back you know you need to have an answer for me. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. Just give you a stumper question that way I go get coffee or go use the bathroom, <laughs> and then they're still working and I'm not. It works out perfect. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just glad I stumped you on this episode. Um, and, you know, for everyone else listening, we always talk about the importance of safety in aviation. And part of that safety is making good judgments. That's all part of aeronautical decision making. Um, it is pretty much impossible, though, to make good aeronautical decisions without the proper information. So really, I think that's why it's so important for us to be able to understand exactly what weather we should expect during our flight and also be very fine tuned in our skills of how to read the weather. Yeah, absolutely. I think that everyone should go on Google uh, today after this episode, and I just want you to type in decoding METARs. And if you go down two or three things on on Google, it says METAR abbreviations from the National Weather Service. Download that document, and it's going to give you a six-page document on how to read METARs. And it's going to have all sorts of different things on there that are just things that you don't normally see, like BR means mist for baby rain. Um, they've got things for dissipating, low drifting, fog, drizzle, smoke, you name it. They've got things on there. Uh, I, I don't, I can't even count how many is on here, but there's gotta be a hundred different abbreviations. Now you don't have to know all of them per se all the time, but you should know all the major ones. And if something comes up on a METAR or a TAF that you're not really sure how to read, you should definitely go check that out. Um, and speaking of checking out, thank you all so much for uh, reaching out to us on several uh, several emails we've gotten and a, uh, a few messages on Twitter and Instagram. But as always, if you want to reach out to us, you can reach us either Twitter or Instagram. For me, it's at Mr. Martini Guy. For Carson, it's at Carson underscore AV17. And our preferred method is Brandon at AviationMentors.com or Carson at AviationMentors.com. And although we're not weathermen, uh, as we wrap up for the day, remember, we're here to guide you in your aviation journey. So fly safe and enjoy the ride.